My name's Garrett Crow. I'm Jalen Edwards. And you guys have this awesome Star Wars collaborative here, so if you want to take us through in the sections you each worked on and we'll talk about the build here. Sure, I'd love to. So it started off as kind of, I built just the, the battle section and then he already had an ATAT -AT walker. So he's like, we'll just put them together, bring them to Comic Palooza, Comic Con in Houston. Uh, and then from there it just grew. So I worked on these sections, um, started with that and it just kind of grew. I actually, originally it was just, it was two of the battle on Scarif Lego sets uh, just combined together grew from there um, and then I added this on the idea was to kind of have a continuation of all the scenes so once we had done that original part we thought like how can we extend it this way and how can I extend it that way so I was like I'll take my section home add on to it and he said I'll take my section home and add on to it um, so yeah we wanted you know as many recognizable scenes so the battle happens and they run through the forest and then they have to take cover they shoot at the walker then they end up at this bunker to have their last stand um, and the, you know, the crash U-wing crashed right there. I, I, the idea was to have it as like, reckon, like, like the way it was oriented as similar to the movie as possible. Sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you see like cheer it there on his way to the switch, uh, Bay's trying to get him to come back. Uh, the crashed U-wing is there, the death troopers, uh, the TIE Reaper, which he designed and built, uh, dropping off some death troopers. And then over there, Bay's is shooting his rocket at the Walker. Um, they're taking cover and I, I wanted to have like some explosions and stuff so there's a light brick under there to kind of give that and then of course at the bunker you know that's where they all run out um, they the garrison is deployed and they all run out and uh, get shot by the rebels uh, and then uh, cheered is there again um, and they're all running through and stuff and then actually we have over here General Merrick he crashed and he's running away from the walker. He actually, you don't see it in the movie, but he actually survived and lives a, a long and prosperous life after that. Um, and then the walker, of course, is Jalen's. All right. Yeah, so this is my custom UCS walker. It started off as a normal AT-AT walker, and then for this mock, we decided to give it a life vest and then turn it into an AT-ACT. It actually opens up. Um, it's a little difficult, and the last thing I want to do is have this thing fall on camera, so I'll leave that to your imagination. We also wanted to incorporate some fun things. So like he said, we have the X-Wing here crashed in the water. In the front, we got the jet skis. Because, you know, Scarif is a really nice looking place, so you got to have a little bit of recreation before you reach your impending doom. <laughs> so then over here, we also got some, the <laughs> like a fun kind of scene with the stormtroopers. We got the lifeguard on deck, got the lobster in the sand, and then we also got Admiral Akbar fishing. I don't know why. So there's two common things with Admiral Akbar. He always has a mug in his hand, and if you've ever played the Lego Force Awakens game and you look at the uh, the level on Taco Donna, he's there in a canoe. So I thought that was very fitting. It's like a beach resort here. Exactly. Yeah. No. Th so this is the fun side, and then that's the side where everyone dies. There wasn't a whole lot of action on Scarif before the Rebels got there, yeah. so... All right, so then as you go back over towards this way, we have the uh, pal leading his little squadron over to the battle. We got the little tree scene. So this is where they would be sneaking out of the Zeta class and then going through the forest to the battle. I actually designed this landing platform and it was really exciting because it was the first time that I'd ever built anything on the side and then kind of laid it in there. So it was really cool to get a lot of the sand details in there and then the orange arrows. That was really important to have them you know, big enough and far enough to have this big monstrosity of a build here from Renegade Clone. So I was really happy we were able to incorporate that into this mod. So then if you go over to the other side, this is the bunker where uh, K2SO, Jin, and Cassian would have gone in. So right now we have it set up where the, uh, the squad is going in. They're going to check the cargo on the ship. And then maybe sometime later we'll have the disguised people going back in through the other side. And this is actually the cargo crate. I'm having a hard time getting it to go back and forth. But um, here, I'll have it go one way for you guys. There we go. All right, it'll probably stop on the other side. But I just wanted it seen on camera. Yes, it does move. <laughs> There you go, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it came back. <laughs> it, it, see, it's showing off for the camera. No, this is my show, all right? Stop taking credit. All right, so then if you come back over here, we have uh, a landing platform for uh, Krennic shuttle. We didn't have a big enough citadel to put it actually on it, but, I mean, it was fitting. I thought it would work out that way. And then I want to definitely highlight th this shot right here. You can see Krennic looking out through the bridge, and he's about to deploy that garrison. I know that's what everyone came to see, and we wanted to throw that in there. And now I guess we can, I guess, look up top. We got Jen up there. She's uh, resetting the antenna for a transmission. Hopefully that works out for her. <laughs> so now let's come around to the back. 
Um, I'm going to kind of go over the bottom levels and then have my friend take over for the top. So down here we wanted to have kind of like a garage level where you, the cargo would come in and then they would kind of deploy it into these two rooms. And then up top, this is kind of the main lo uh, lobby. So if you can see Jen, Cassian, and K2, they're walking in disguised. Hopefully they don't get caught. We've got a lot of the Imperial officers and, you know, just normal Imperial happenings going on. we got Governor Price sticking something inside of that Astro Droid. And then we get to the fun part. So right here we have a little gambling going on. Don't tell anyone I said that. We have the mouse droids racing, got the guys throwing money all around. And then over here, this is probably one of my favorite parts in here. So my buddy and I actually work at a Lego store. So here we put an Imperial Lego store. And if you look at the employee minifigures, that's me and that's him over there working the counter. <laughs> so then I'll go ahead and let you take over for the top levels. Yeah, so if you go one level up, that's like the iconic, that was like the iconic scene I felt like from the Citadel uh, where Krennic, you know, they're looking out in astonishment that the rebels would dare attack an Imperial installation. Um, but yeah, he's standing there and there's all the guys. And then this stormtrooper actually just walked in with some ice cream. He's kind of unaware of what's going on. Um, but yeah, deploy the garrison, probably my favorite scene. And I loved doing that room. Like that was my favorite room in the Citadel to do. Um, and then the level above that, that's kind of the um, archive. That's the entrance to the archives. Um, K2SO is at the console, and he's uh, the, the the one scene is where he just like shoots the stormtrooper without even looking. Um, so that's what he's doing. He's shooting the stormtroopers as they walk in to hold off for a few more minutes. Um, and then above that, kind of the continuation, the idea like they're climbing up, uh, they're getting uh, stardust out of the archives. Stardust is getting stardust. Yeah. <laughs> and Krennic walked in with a death trooper to shoot at them, and then Cassian's about to fall for a while. Uh, hit some poles on the way down, really hurt his back. And then also, I'd like to highlight the janitor down there. He was happy that he got his, uh, tr um, his transfer from Coruscant, but it looks like he's still dealing with the same old crap. He's still cleaning up bodies. And then Leia and Luke wandered in one movie too early. Uh, they're hopefully, hopefully about to get off planet before things go south, so they won't, uh, they won't derail the franchise. Exactly. Then, it looks like you've got some lights incorporated here as well. Yeah, so we, uh, this was like, I don't know, two days ago, we went yeah. to a Home Depot and found some LED lights that we could, okay. you know, hook up there. Um, they're, they're just, you know, some click lights that we uh, stuck up there with studs to help kind of illuminate it a little bit. We weren't worried that, we, we weren't necessarily worried that they wouldn't be able to be seen, but it, it adds a little bit, you know, with the lights kind of coming down. Um, but obviously, the, this place is really well lit, but yeah. they, we, we, think, we thought, like, it kind of added a little bit to the scenes. Definitely, and I, I love the, how the whole layout came together and the humor you've put out in there and everything. I think it's really cool. So talk about kind of the collaborative process as you guys were working on this together. Was it over Skype and stuff you talked or in person you would meet? How did that work? So, yeah, so we do work together and we've known each other for a couple years yeah. now. Um, but when, when we kind of built our own sections, there was, we were always obviously in contact talking like, hey, I'm going to do this. Here's a picture. Okay, like, like we made sure everything would add up. We wanted it to flow as well as possible. We wanted it to look like one cohesive diorama. Um, but then the Citadel was built at his place and I would come over pretty much, you know, once or twice a week and we would just work on it in the late hours into the night. Um, but we'd always have ideas. We'd send each other and be like, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And it was always, we were very, you know, hung out quite a bit over the last, uh, over the last few months. Yeah. Say, yeah, I've gotten to know him pretty well over these past few months. And I think the biggest thing that we wanted to accomplish, you know, on its surface, you can see it. It's a, it's a lot of people, it's a big Star Wars thing. And if you really like Star Wars, you're like, oh, cool, it's Scarif. But if you really look at the detail and some of the innards of it, there's a lot of uh, humor to it. There's a lot of interesting things going on. So we want to give something um, that people will notice something ever, new every time they look at it. That was really the thing we wanted to accomplish with this. And I'm just happy that it all came together. Yeah, definitely. So then as it came together, did you guys you know, kind of bring it in one long section or how did that work? How did the sections kind of break break apart? Yeah, so um, I had probably most of it at my place. I had the yeah. Citadel, I had the landing platform up until the walker, and then he had the two sections that he worked solely on. Um, and then whenever we do the collaborative thing, he would come over and then we like work on the Citadel. Um, so it all kind of breaks apart in I'd say probably like three foot sections. Okay. And then whenever we wanted to get everything finished up. We just lined it all up in my living room. And then, you know, we just got all of our foliage out, tried to disperse it as evenly as possible, um, made sure everything looked good together. Cause that was the biggest thing since it was kind of two of us doing like two separate parts of it solely. Like when we brought together, we made sure, wanted to make sure that it all flowed in. It looked like one cozy of mock. 
Definitely. And if we can come back and talk about, I know you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I really like the, the kind of studs not on top, not building with the landing pad. Yeah. So kind of talk about how you achieved that effect and sort of trial and error as you figured out the best way to do that. Right, yeah. So this was the first time that I ever did anything like that. And I had seen in some people's like Death Star hangar mocks that the arrows could be accomplished with those 45 degree slopes. So I was like, okay, that's going to be perfect for this because there's big orange arrows on it. So I wanted to make sure that I could incorporate that. So a lot of it was just having a bunch of like gray brick pulled out and then I would build it kind of sitting on the table and then kind of sit it up and look at it and make sure it looked right and then the biggest problem was trying to figure out where it would break away in sections because if you, I'm sure you know like if you build a Lego wall too tall it's going to be pretty hard to lay on its side and have it fit in perfectly so at first I kind of like size it make sure that it would fit into the square that I made um, and then I um, basically try to see like how many sections it would need to break away into so like, I'd be able to lay it in sideways and not have it fall apart in my hands and then a lot of like the weathering and the sand that was just kind of random I was just like okay like this would look kind of this would look good here and then like I, I so I, I guess I could also say I started from the movie like a freeze frame of the landing platform and I'd be like okay the sand is generally in this area but I didn't want to drive myself tell so it's, at a certain point I was just like okay I'll just put sand wherever and have it look nice Exactly, yeah. Well, that's really cool. So uh, do you guys have any more collaborators planned for the future then? Uh, I'm sure we do. We, we're, we've been discussing it. Um, there's definitely a couple things that are on this scale that would you would really need to collaborate on to do, you know, like this. Like, you know, if, if either of us did this by ourselves, it would not have ended up, you know, as like we're both pretty proud of it and it would not have ended up like this. So there's I, I'm sure that there'll be something more in the future to work on together. He's saying this now. I'm sure I'll get him to do something later on. <laughs> My big plan next is I would like to do a pod race, um, okay. like a, with a big desert, and then have some pod racers on some train track going throughout it with a stadium and things like that. So I'm sure I, I can find something interesting enough that he'll want to do. And I don't know. Maybe he'll build something that I'll add on to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. Well, for now, I think this turned out very impressive, and I really appreciate both of you talking with me about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.